and uh, Terps hoops and footballs. So you'll be listening to the College Sports Report here on the famous E Radio WMCR. I'll be back. Hello and welcome back to the College Sports Report here on E Radio WMCR. So, um, like I said, going back to the Maryland Terrapins. So, for Maryland basketball fans, it seems to be getting back to some kind of normal state as the premise for the 2020 ACC Big Ten Challenge was announced. The Terps will face an old foe, but they will travel to South Carolina to play the Clemson Tigers. The game is scheduled for December 9th to be played in Little John Coliseum, home of the Tigers, which uh, some Terps fans have fond memories of. This will be the 40, This will be the 141st meeting between the Terps and the Tigers, which began in the early 1938. Has Maryland holding a commanding lead with 90 victories, which includes winning the last 13 consecutive meetings from 98 until 2014. So this will be the first time Maryland has played the Tigers since leaving the ACC in 2014 for the Big Ten Conference. Since its inception, the ACC is 12-6-3 in the challenge and 133-106 in challenging games. The Terps' all-time record in the challenge is 11-10 as a member of both the ACC and the Big Ten Conferences. The Terps' record while being a me- member of ACC was a record of 10-5, but it has a dismal 1-5 record representing the Big Ten Conference with their only win coming last year to be Notre Dame, 72-51. In College Park. Clemson holds an 11 and 9 advantage in ACC since Big Ten Challenge and the 11 wins are tied for the fourth most among all 29, all 29 ACC and Big Ten programs that have taken part in the challenge over the years with one of the losses coming last year against Minnesota 78 to 60. The Tigers finished that season, 2019 season, with a record of 16 and 15 record and a record of 9 and 11 in ACC conference play. CBS Sports recently released its ACC predictions and was picked to finish ninth in the ACC in 2020. Clemson will enter the 2021 seasons with a team that looks similar to that of their 2019-20 teams. The Tigers will have four of their top five scorers from last season back, who is also four of their top five rebounders. And they also have reached each of their top five assist leaders back. The Tigers come March could be a team on the bubble when March Madness rolls around. Historically, the top ACC team and the top Big Ten teams get paired, second best, etc. So Maryland fans were looking forward to a matchup against UNC or UVA or even Duke. And I'm sure Terp fans are feeling a little slighted with the pairing against Clemson. As the Terps are reigning Big Ten champs. But the way I see it, and with all that has transpired over the last several months with the pandemic and scheduling efforts, I think Clemson could be the best non-conference team they'll face this year. So the Terps need to play this game as if it was a championship game. A win for the Terps against a solid Clemson team could no doubt only enhance their resume come March. And I think this game could be the difference between being in the dance and last four hours. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, Maryland's bummed about playing Clemson, but you're not playing the Clemson Tigers in football. You're playing the Clemson Tigers in basketball, in college basketball. And Clemson's record in college basketball might not seem all that well than Clemson's record in NCAA football. Because that guy, Trevor Lawrence, he's, he's, he's cooking it in Clemson. He's lining it up. He's lighting people up. Now, he's out this week of Clemson, the NCAA football. He's out this week. Um, and, you know, and some people are saying that, you know, he, you know, that he's one of the top, top, if not the top five best NCAA quarterbacks ever in school history. And listen, Trevor Lawrence, you know, a lot of people were saying that, you know, he might be in the NFL draft next season. Uh, no, he's – I think he's going to he's gonna stay in college for a while and continue his dominance over the NCAA. And then when he gets in the NFL, we'll see what happens. Because all college quarterbacks that dominate in college, when they come to the NFL, they are not really that good their first or second year. So you got to think about that. We got to take that into consideration that uh, Trevor Lawrence might just try to be good in – the college ranks. When he gets to the NFL, he might be that good too. But in college, I know he's cooking and he has these 
Clemson Tigers at 7-0, and and they do play today, uh, tonight, in fact. And um, we'll see if they can get to 8-0 or if that 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 record will be 7-1. and we'll, we'll see. Uh, moving on here. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier about Maryland's basketball, so they have a staff member. Uh, so Maryland's basketball staff was among several to contact Gail's Paul Atkinson Tuesday after he announced his plans to transfer. ESPN's Jeff Barcello reported, uh, Atkinson's situation is unusual. Uh, the Ivy League Co-Player of the Year last season, he's taken advantage of the NCAA's decision to allow currently enrolled athletes an extra year of eligibility because of COVID-19. So he'll likely play this year for the Bulldogs, then more on as a graduate transfer in the spring and play one year on a bigger stage. The 6'10 center from West Palm Beach, Florida, averaged 17.5 points while shooting 63% from the field to help his team with the Ivy League regular season title. Mark Turgan would like to add another big man to Maryland's 2021 recruiting class, which includes 6'9 power forward Julian Reese of Baltimore, Maryland, 6'8 small forward James Graham, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and 6'7 wing like Connish, who's from Baltimore but attends school in South Carolina. The Terps have only two centers on their roster, and 7'2 sophomore Cole Merle, who still needs to prove himself as a Big Ten player, and Alabama transfer Galen Smith, who will be gone after this season. He's often worked the transfer and grad transfer market, signing Smith as a grad transfer last season after he left Alabama. Coincidentally, Atkinson's opportunity to shine grew last season because of an injury to Yale standout big man Jordan Brunner, who was a top pick for Turrigan after he decided to transfer, but who ended up at Alabama. Ivy League really won't play non-conference games this season because of the pandemic, prompting a number of players to leave teams and consider transferring or sitting out this season. Runners class ranked 16th nationally and 4th in the Big Ten. Turgeon could add a big man, another shooter, as of most establishing big man who opt to transfer, though. The competition of Atkinson will be thick. According to Barzello, he also heard from Duke, Arkansas, Miami, Florida, USC, Stanford, Notre Dame, Gonzaga, Texas, Ohio State, OK State, Wake Forest, Cincinnati, and last but not least, he heard from Georgia on this past Tuesday night. So, you know, with with these with these with these players um, in the recruiting class of 2021, it's going to be hard to recruit during the pandemic. But if you're recruiting uh, virtually, that's a good thing. If you recruit, if you're recruiting, if you're more likely to recruit like not virtually, then you know, continue to wear your mask and stuff. And basically, um, I think college scouts are doing recruiting virtually because of this pandemic and because of everything that's that's been going around. So. I think that the recruiting class will be virtually, and I think um, the players that I've just mentioned on this list have uh, earned their spot to have recruitments uh, come their way. So these guys are pretty good. These guys are almost seven and a half feet. Okay, Julian Reese, Julian Reese is six nine. Uh, James Graham is six seven, and they have players that are seven two. So yeah, these these guys are pretty tall and big for their size, but I mean, they're college students, so they're going to eat and bulk up because they're playing sports. So, yeah, so we just see what happens with these recruitments. Um, now getting to some pro sports. And um, the first game I'm going to get to is who's playing. So New York and Washington, New York Giants at the Washington football team. Uh, current records, New York's 1-7, Washington is 2-5, and five, so they're not that good. In terms of record, Washington is better than the Giants. They're two and five, but then again, they're not that good, you know. And don't let the Giants' record fool you. They they are better than what their record says, and Washington is better than what their record says as well. So don't let these two teams fool you. They can get out and run and score points on you in a hurry. So what to know? So the Washington football team has been on the wrong side of a one-way rivalry with the New York Giants, and it's open to record their first win since October 28th of 18. Washington's bye week comes to an end as they meet up with the New York football giants at 1 p.m. Eastern at FedEx Field on Sunday. Washington will be strutting in after a victory while the Giants will be stumbling on from a defeat. When you finish with 255 more yards than your opponent, like Washington did two weeks ago, uh, a favorable outcome is almost sure to follow. They were the clear victors by a 25-3 margin over the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, the odds makers were on Washington's side, but they didn't give the team enough credit as the margin was unexpectedly wide. As running back Antonio Gibson was the offensive standout of the game for Washington, rushing for one touchdown and 128 yards on 20 
20 carries. This was the first time Gibson has racked up 100 plus rushing yards all season. So Washington's defense was a presence as well, holding Dallas to partially 142 yards. The defense embarrassed Dallas's offensive line to sack the quarterback six times for a loss of 55 yards. Leading the way was linebacker Montez Sweat in his two sacks. Sweat now has five sacks through seven games. Meanwhile, it was close but no cigar for New York as they fell 25-23 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this past Monday night. No one had a standout game offensively for the Giants, but they got scores from wide receiver Golden Tate, running back Deion Lewis, and running back Wayne Gallman. Quarterback Daniel Jones ended up with a pass rating of 119.80. Uh, Washington is now 2-5, and five, but New York sits at 1-7. So if Washington is only one after wins this year, and New York is 1-5 after losses. So, you know, taking these picks now with these teams and what they're trying to do to get wins, what each team is trying to do to get wins, uh, I'm going to get to my keys for the game later in the show. But, you know, right now Washington is has the better edge at winning on Sunday. And you'll see why when I get to the keys of the game. So how to watch this game? So uh, tomorrow, Sunday, 1 p.m., where FedEx Field, Landover, Maryland. Oh, and they will be having fans come to the games, but it will be a slim amount of fans. Uh, TV, that's on Fox. You can follow it on the CBS Sports app or the Fox app. And the odds. So the football team, Washington football team, is a three-point favorite against the Giants, according to the latest NFL odds. Oversized under, that's a negative 111 points. So serious history. So New York has won seven out of their last 11 games against Washington. And this dates back to all the way to 2020. Uh, October 18th, 2020, New York 20, Washington 19. That was back in week six when they lost. Uh, December 22nd, 2019, New York 41, Washington 35. That was last year. September 29th, 2019, New York 24, Washington 3. That was another game last year. Two years ago, December 9th, 2018, New York 40, Washington 16. That was a brutal game. I don't even want to think about that game. Uh, October 28th, 2018, Washington 20, and New York 13. That was a, a decent game. Alex Smith was quarterback of that game. December 31st, 2017, New York 18, Washington 10. And that was a game that uh, Kirk Cousins played. And, and uh, you know, Eli Manning was still playing on that team as well. November 23rd, 2017, Washington 20, New York 10. That was a, a Thanksgiving game in Washington. And Washington got that done. Uh, January 1st, 2017, New York 19, Washington 10. That was a January 1st game, a New Year's uh, Day game as well. Uh, September 25th, 2016, Washington 29, New York 27. Washington won by uh, a touchdown. Um, November 29th, 2015, Washington 20 versus New York 14. That was another Washington victory. September 24th, 2015, New York 32, Washington 21. That was a, a brutal game for Washington in that game. Um, when I come back, um, I'm talking about the Ravens uh, game. As a matter of fact, when I get back, I'll also be wrapping up my week. So you've also been listening to uh, the College Sports Report, hosted by me, Brandon Buckner, here on E-Radio, WMCR. I'll be back in a jiff. Welcome back to the College Sports Report, here on E-Radio, WMCR. Now... Aside from watching the football team playing on Sunday, there's another NFL team. Uh, so both the Baltimore Ravens and Indianapolis Colts are stepping into week nine with identical records, five and two. But only one of them will walk out with their sixth win of the year. This AFC head-to-head -head is one of the best matchups this week's slate has to offer as both Indy and Baltimore not only have serious playoff hopes, but are two of the most stouted defenses in the entire NFL. That's probably to make life difficult for both Phillip Rivers and reigning MVP, Mr. Lamar Jackson, as they both try to lead their team to victory to keep pace in the playoff hunt. How to watch this game? Sunday, November 8th, time, 1 p.m. Uh, so, location, Lucas Oil Stadium, Indianapolis, Indiana. TV, CBS. And you can stream this game on CBS All Access. And to follow this game on CBS Sports app. So Ravens at Colts. So the law, latest odd makers uh, has the Colts at plus one. So 
Baltimore originally opened up as a field goal favorite on the road. 